Well, welcome back to the fundamentals course. If you remember last time, we were doing an exercise where we imported that Liferay archive file um, into our existing website. And in this exercise, we're going to examine some of the features that that provided us by importing that LAR file. We're going to take a look at a couple of things here. We're just going to sort of briefly examine the page fragments, uh, the blogs that were imported, and then how we can publish those blogs using the asset publisher. That happens automatically and dynamically using that widget. And then finally, we'll look at an application display template. We're going to do the following things in this exercise. We will start by viewing those imported page fragments that we, you can use to compose any web page, as well as viewing the blog posts. And then we'll even take a little try at editing that home page to include different fragments, see how that process works. And then finally, we're going to edit the asset publisher configuration and sort of see how we can edit widgets in Liferay DXP to filter or just in general change what's displayed with a widget. And then if you have time, you can go ahead and try out these bonus exercises. For example, you can try to create your very own new fragment and then go ahead and try to edit the homepage to include that fragment. Or alternatively, you can just edit one of the existing fragments from the existing collection. And then go ahead and try to also edit an existing fragment text on the homepage. Now this won't actually change the fragment, but it will change what is displayed on that given page. So it will be specific to that page. And then you can try to create a new blog as well. And that should update in your asset publisher widget. So let's go ahead and get started here. So let me go over to my browser window. I have logged in as our Josiah Copeland system administrative user. Again, over here we have the personal menu. So I can demonstrate that process real quickly one more time. So we can sign in as Josiah Copeland. And I have my not very secure password A here to log in. Oh, and I forgot that he's not at the Liferay domain. He's at Livingston. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Sign in. And once we've signed in, now all of a sudden we see those menus we talked about previously, the control menu, the product menu, and we'll be using those here. So first, let's go ahead and examine what pages are now in our site. So if we go over here, we can see that after importing that LAR file, we now have three pages, the home page, as well as two widget pages, including travel blogs and search. Now, if you go over to the site once more, you'll see we have this navigation menu that we can configure since we're the admin, and that's why this little blue box shows up here. And you might wonder why there's only two sites here. Well, the answer to that is because even though we have three sites, one of these is configured to be hidden from the navigation menu widget. If we were to check this, then go back to the site, we would see that it would, would display. So that's just a little tidbit there if you're, if you're curious. So let's go ahead and go back to the site. And we can see there are these two pages. On the travel blogs page, we have the asset publisher, and this is displaying blogs dynamically. Anytime you create a new blog, it will be displayed here. There's no, no need to go ahead and edit this and add it in. It will just automatically display. We're showing currently six items per page now out of 11 results, and we could go to the next paginated page and see the rest of them. So where are these blogs actually located? So if we go over to content and data under site administration, we can see that we have the blogs here as well as other kinds of content. And from here we can see as well all the list of blogs. A regular user is not going to have access to this panel over here, but as an admin we can have that access. So this is a list of 11 blogs. And then if we go back to the site, we can see those same blogs listed in this publisher. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump to that last point while we're here, where we said we want to edit that asset publisher to display only blogs. And really, this is not going to change anything right now, because if we actually look 
at that asset publisher here and we go ahead and go over to configuration we'll see that well okay it's actually specified to only show blog entries right now and that's because I edited this previously but let's go ahead and set it to any and see if that makes any difference in the total number of results we press save we get that success message after that we're going to have to exit out of this configuration menu and nope no change in results and that's because all we're displaying here is blogs that's really the only kind of asset that we have on our website right now if we refresh this page again no change in results what we can try to do is to demonstrate what this does is we can try to change this to some other type of asset for example wiki page and now we see that our asset publisher is totally empty so that just shows base, some basic configuration for the asset publisher okay I'm gonna switch that back to any for now so let's go ahead and take a look at these page fragments here so this home page is quite long it's composed of uh, many different page fragments we can investigate those page fragments as an admin by going over here to the site administration site builder page fragments section and from here we can see a collection called Livingston front page and within here we have a total of 10 different page fragments that have already been created for us. We can examine those, edit them perhaps if we want to using HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. And then we have the visualization of that page fragment here. I'm going to go ahead and go back. Well, now that we've seen the, the page fragments, let's go ahead and go back to the site. And at the current moment, we can't edit anything here. So we're going to go over to the control menu at the top and we're going to click on edit. From here, we can see that we now have this cursor that's sort of not enabled when we're up here. And, that, and that's going to be because if you click on this, you'll see it says this area is defined by the theme. To change the theme settings, we're going to have to go to look and feel configuration. So we're not going to worry about that right now. The point is that this is established by the theme, but there are some things that we can edit on this home page. So you'll see as I hover over this, I have this, this pop up here that says main banner. That's the name of this fragment. I can go ahead and remove that. And that's pretty safe to do uh, because at any time you can go ahead and click up here on discard draft and that will roll it back to whatever was published or saved last. So if I do that, I'll see that, okay, I'm, it's back here. The main banner is back in action. Let's go over here on the right and we can see that collection of page fragments that was created for us. And we can see them all listed here. At any point in time, we can drag and drop these. Now you'll see that blue sort of line appear between uh, the top of the page and this page fragment. Or we can put one here, for example, scroll down put featured packages here and you put another one right here just to show how that works and then again if I want to remove it I'll just go up here and then whenever you're satisfied with your changes you would just go up here to publish click that button and you get that success message down here in addition let's say that you want to customize a specific page fragment for only one page what you can do is go ahead and just double click on that section of the page fragment and you can just start typing there I've clearly shown that this main banner has been edited if I publish that there we go you can see it and if I now go back to the main banner and add this in again here it hasn't changed at all right the text for the actual page fragment is still the same so that allows you a little bit more fine-grained customization of specific pages. So we viewed the imported page fragments. 
we've viewed the blog posts, we've tried editing the home page a little bit, and we've also tried configuring widgets. Let's go to the next video.